G'day and welcome back for another Space Engineers tutorial. Today, we're going to be building our first mining ship. In the previous tutorial, we built this platform here where we've got our wind turbines providing power. We've got a basic assembler, a basic refinery, a cargo container, and we moved our survival kit from the respawn pod onto our base. The next thing we're going to be adding to our base before we build our mining ship is a battery. The reason we're gonna build this first is that a battery is going to accumulate charge from these wind turbines and it will be able to dump that charge more quickly into our mining ship so it can be recharged more rapidly than these wind turbines can do. And because it's going to take a bit of time for it to charge up, we want to start that process now before we start our build. To build a battery, we're going to press Ctrl 2 to get to our second hotbar, press G to open our blocks menu, then right click on the battery to add it to our toolbar. And we'll head over to our cargo container, go to our production menu, and I'm going to build 20 steel plate. Then we can take that steel plate, pop it in our inventory, walk down the end here and stick our battery down. Then go back to our production menu and build all of the remaining components and finish up our battery. With our battery complete, we're going to be able to start accumulating charge in this from our wind turbines ready for us to use in our ship. During the last tutorial I collected a fair amount of resources so hopefully we'll have enough on this station to be able to build all the things we need for our ship. I'm going to order up a few components so that we've got some manufacturing while we're waiting. I know I'm going to need at least 100 steel plates, so I'm going to shift click on that. I know I'm going to need at least 100 construction components, so I'm going to shift click on that. And I'm going to probably need at least 100 motors, so I'm going to shift click on that too. This way these can be built and they'll be sitting there ready for us to use later. To make building our ship a little bit easier, I'm going to build a little bit of a platform. Let's grab these steel plate out, double click on them. The reason I'm building this little platform is that it's going to make it easier for us to see what we're doing and to move around the ship while it's under construction. To get started building a small grid ship is a little bit different to when we're building large grid. Because small grid can't intersect with the voxels around here, we need another way to lock it down so it's secure and won't roll over while we're building pieces onto it. The easiest way to do that is to begin with a landing gear. You can see a landing gear on our number nine on our hotbar. As I bring it up, it comes up as a large grid version. We can either press R to change to the smaller version or press the number again to cycle between both options work. We can then click and drop one down. Landing gear, when you drop it down, will automatically lock to the surface if they're aligned. If you drop it from too high, it may topple over, like so. Or if you drop it sideways, it's not going to land that way either. If you find that it's rotated the wrong way, the easiest way to deal with that is to press the number twice and it'll switch back to perfectly aligned with your camera view and then drop it from nice and close to the surface. Let's clean up this mess. <laughs> With the mess cleaned up, let's add a couple of blocks to our landing gear here. I'm gonna stick two on top. This is mainly to give myself clearance underneath so I can add blocks underneath as well as all around because underneath is often quite difficult if you start really close to the ground. The first block we're going to add to this is going to be our cockpit. We press control two, go to our G menu and add our cockpit to this list. We can also look at our progression menu and see why we wanna start with the cockpit. If I type thruster up here, we can see that all the thrusters are currently locked behind us having built a cockpit. Similarly, gyroscopes, which are required to make a ship turn, are also locked behind it. So if we build our cockpit, we've then unlocked everything that we need. Place the cockpit on top, and then we can use a new method to get all of the different parts we need for this. So what we're gonna do is we're going to, with our welder in hand, right click on the cockpit, and it will say components added to build planner. If we then press G, you can see in our blocks menu, there's this section down in the bottom right here called build planner. This is where you can add blocks to a list that can then be utilized for ordering components from our production systems. So if we then walk over to this cargo container and not open it up, but while highlighted, press shift middle mouse, it will say all components were successfully put into production. If we look at our production window, we can then see that all those parts for the cockpit are there. We can then press on our inventory access port with middle mouse and it will say all components were successfully withdrawn. Sometimes you might have to middle mouse more than once to get all of the parts out. Collecting all those components will also clear the item from our build planner list. And weld it up and we'll see by building cockpit, you have unlocked new blocks. So now I have access to the thrusters and we can add them to our hotbar to be able to place them around. The next thing to add to our mining ship is going to be the drill. To get the drill, press G, type drill, and we can right click and add that to the hotbar. 
We want to make sure that this drill is conveyed to our cockpit because we're going to use our cockpit as a midway through to our cargo that's at the rear. The drill has three cargo access ports, one on each side and one on the back. We want to line up the one on the back with this cargo access port on the front of the cockpit. So we bring it across, make sure it's lined up directly in front of the cockpit and place it there. We want to add some cargo. So we're going to grab our cargo containers. We're also going to grab our conveyor junction block here, the larger one, not the smaller one, and add that to our hotbar. If we have a look at our cargo containers in small grid, we have three options. These tiny little ones, this medium one, and this large one. For our first mining ship, we're going to stick with the medium cargo container. The reason we're starting relatively small is because it's going to cost a lot of materials to build something that's bigger. So you may as well start with something that can at least get you mining with this ship early so you can stop hand mining sooner. If we have a look at our medium cargo container, you can see that there are four cargo access ports, two large and two small. The small ones cannot connect to these large ports. You must match type for type. So if we want to convey this in such a way that the large ports are facing forward and backwards, which we do, because that's going to help us build our connector, we're going to need a way to convert from these small ports on the back of the cockpit to the large port on our cargo container. And that is going to be done with a conveyor converter. The conveyor converter block has this large port on one side and these small ports on the other. If we make sure that the conveyor converter is lined up this way, not this way, this way, <laughs> it will line up properly with those ports on the cockpit. To do that, we can use this line on the large port because it aligns with those three ports. If we make sure that that line is horizontal when we place this, it will definitely line up to our cockpit. And that's going to connect our drill to our cockpit to this conveyor converter, which is then going to allow our medium cargo container to sit on the back here. Some of you may have found these blocks a bit difficult to place in the correct position. And there's a good reason for that. And it's called auto rotate. This can be toggled by pressing T and when it's on, if I walk up to a grid, Space Engineers is going to try and predict the orientation of the block that I want to place. That means that if I pick a particular orientation, walk away and come back, it's going to change. If we toggle this off and I set a particular orientation for this block, walk away, come back, it's going to hold that orientation. There are a few specific exceptions to this rule like conveyors, but for the vast majority of blocks, this will hold true and it is quite handy to be able to turn this off and leave it off most of the time. At least for me, I find that to be easier. Then we're going to add our connector. The connector is going to be how we attach to our base here and how we transfer the ores from our ship to our base. So to get a connector, let's type connect. And we want this big one. This small one cannot connect to a large grid connector. So it doesn't work here. We must use the standard connector. So we'll right click on that. And then we're going to build this using that large port aligned to our container. And that's why we did the conversion. So now, ores should be able to pass from our drill into the cockpit's inventory, which does have a moderate amount of storage, then into our medium cargo storage, then into our, to our connector's storage, and then when we're hooked up to the base, all of that can be moved across to the base. So let's weld this part up now, so then we can add more blocks to this. As before, to order up the parts, we can right click on each block of our ship and you can do this with up to eight blocks at a time. And then we can walk over to our conveyor port here, press shift middle mouse and put it into production. If we have a look at our production window, it'll have all the parts we need for those four blocks. The next thing I want to place onto our ship is our batteries. I want to build two of these, one on each side. We're going to place one just down here lined up with the bottom of the cargo container and the conveyor converter and another one on the opposite side in the same position. Weld those up too. In small grid, you have two battery size options. You've got these little ones and you've got the larger ones that we've used here. The reason we've used the large ones is because they can output enough power for our thrusters and they can also store more power so we'll be able to fly longer. And I've checked ahead based on how many thrusters I'm planning on adding to this build and two batteries is about what we need for this build. Over time, you'll get a feel for this or you'll be one of these people that uses a spreadsheet to do it. I'm definitely a go-by-feel kind of person. We've got power, we've got cargo, we've got the drill. Let's add some thrust. To do that, we're going to add this thing here, the large atmospheric thruster with the plus symbol on it. Right click on that, and we'll see that there are multiple types available to us in small grid. We've got these large ones, 
We've got these smaller ones. We've got these flat ones that come in a couple of different shapes. And these littler flat ones that also come in a couple of different shapes. The main difference between these thrusters that's relevant to us today is how much force they can generate. These small flat ones produce the least. Next up is these ones, then the flat ones, and then finally the big ones. The bigger thrusters also produce more thrust per unit of power. So they're more power efficient, which is important to us a little bit with this mining ship. To optimize things a little bit, we're going to use our flat atmospheric thrusters for our lift. But which way do we need to place these? Thrusters must be placed somewhat carefully. With the standard thrusters, it's pretty clear which end is going to be the exhaust. And in this case, it's to the left of screen. With the flat ones, it's a little less obvious. But we can tell by using this bounding box, that green box that's around the block right now. The green box extends in the direction of the exhaust. So the exhaust in this case would be pointing right. Or if I flip it around, pointing left. Or pointing towards our character. That's important because the exhaust will damage blocks that it's next to. So if I were to place this block like this, it is going to progressively damage that battery because the battery is too close. So we have to be mindful of where the exhaust is pointing so that we don't damage things. To begin with, I'm going to place a few of these flat atmospheric thrusters underneath our ship. We're going to start with a square one here sitting just behind the cockpit. And then I'm going to choose a D-shaped one here just because I think the rounded edge looks nice underneath the connector. And that's going to be two of our three lifting thrusters. There's a third lifting thruster that I want to place, but it's going to be placed directly under this cockpit and we will place it down later. So next up, we're going to add some reverse thrust because we're going to be probably pointing our drill downward a fair bit. We're going to want more of this than we want of the other directions. In order to make room for that and potentially make some room for some future expansions on our build, I'm not going to place a thruster here because I'd like to potentially leave myself the option of adding a drill on either side of the existing one. To make it so that I can place this block up here because it can't attach to the cockpit there, we're going to add an armor block here and here and then add a thruster on the top and bottom of that armor block. One up there and one down here. Another one here and here as well as a 5th and 6th thruster here and here. Lining up the middle of the thruster with that conveyor converter. That's going to give us 6 thrusters for when we're tilting forward. Next up, let's add some sideways thrust. We'll add a pair of thrusters under here like this. And then we can add some forward thrust here and here. Do the same on the other side. Forward thrust lining up just inside our battery here. And then 2 going sideways here and here. That's going to give us forward, back, left, right, up, and gravity gives us down. The reason I'm going to use gravity to give us the down thrust here is because it's going to make us more power and weight efficient because we don't have to carry the weight of thrusters to push us back down. This adds some risk to flying, but I think on balance it's worth it for making something that's more capable in all the other directions because by getting rid of anything that pushes us down, we can then have more things that push us sideways, forward and back. All right, and this is all welded up once I've got this thruster done. And you might be thinking at this point, great, we've got thrust, we've got a drill, we've got batteries, we've got a connector, we've got a mining ship. No, <laughs> because thrusters in space engineers always push their force through the center of mass of the grid, this ship currently has no ability to turn it won't be able to rotate at all. So what we're going to do is we're going to add that ability by using a gyroscope. Press G, find our gyroscopes. We're going to add them on each side on this block right here. One there and one there. I'm just going to rotate them to match because symmetry. <laughs> For direct control methods, gyroscopes will function exactly the same no matter which way you place them. You don't have to worry about their orientation. But if you want to know about the specific situations where it does matter where you place them, I've got a dedicated tutorial to gyroscopes that I'll link above. In this case, it doesn't matter. And now we have a flyable ship. Which is great. Because now we can make a way to connect it to our base. I'm going to walk over here and I'm going to build a connector on our base. I'm just going to attach it to this survival kit. So we'll go back to our connector on our second page. And this time we're going to place the large grid version 
align it up to our conveyor port and pop it there. Then we're going to right click, grab the components we've already made of it, which aren't many, with middle mouse, then shift middle mouse to produce the rest of them and get this thing welded up. The reason I built that connector now is that I can move my ship over to that connector and start charging my batteries while we build the last bits. But I also wanted to demonstrate some things about this ship before we improve it. I'm going to remove this landing gear here and hopefully the ship will hover. Good. <laughs> I can then hop in the cockpit and I can lift with space and I can fly around just as I do with my character. Need to be careful though that I don't run into these wind turbines because that would be bad for both my ship and the wind turbines. Before we fly away, just in case we have trouble finding our way back here, we're going to create a quick GPS for where our base is. So I'm going to open up chat with enter, type slash, all in lowercase GPS, and then call it home. And that's going to create a GPS location right where I'm sitting in my cockpit. And that means I shouldn't ever get lost. There are a few things to look at when you're testing your ship. One is its power consumption. You want to make sure that you can lift move sideways and move forward or backwards at the same time without maxing your power consumption. You can see that I'm at 60%, so that's okay, I don't have too many thrusters. In this case I probably should move backwards rather than forwards and moving sideways and that goes up to 70% because I do have more reverse thrusters than forward. I also want to make sure that I can tilt my ship a fair way before it starts losing altitude. Definitely do this at a higher altitude rather than close to the ground so that you've got more buffer in case things go sideways. And speaking of going sideways, how far can I tilt? It looks like while I'm empty, I can tilt to, if we look at our artificial horizon on our just next to our hotbar, I'm probably at something around 60, 70 degrees there, which is pretty good. But that's while I'm empty. This is going to get a lot heavier with some ore. So I think I'm going to want to have some more lateral thrust and that extra lifting thruster that I can place in now that I've removed that landing gear. In order to land our ship, there are a few things we're going to do to make it as safe as possible. First off, we're going to press G. We're going to find our connector. And this is just pure force of habit for me. I'm going to put it on number nine and I'm going to select switch lock. You can either drag it down to that slot to pick the option or you can right click on it and it will fill from the left. So if I right click on it and select switch lock, it'll move it over here. Or I can drag it down here and select switch lock over here. I'm then going to fly down and try and line myself up with that connector. This is definitely easier with third person. Carefully bring myself closer. Make sure I don't move too fast back into that connector because you can break it. When we finally get close, a magnet will pull us into position. If you find that you're destroying a lot of connectors, one thing you can do to improve the safety of moving into that position is get rid of that magnet. We can do that by pressing K, finding our connector, scrolling down here, and in this strength bar, dragging it all the way to disabled. That way when we move near this connector, we're not going to get moved around unexpectedly, which means any crashing is 100% the pilot's fault. Because <laughs> they've moved too quickly. And now you can see as I move away, the connector goes from white to yellow as I get closer. When it's yellow, that means it's ready to lock. As you can see on my hotbar, it says ready to. If I press number nine now, it'll switch to green because I'm now locked to that base. Your connector also disables its magnetism automatically for a brief grace period when you disconnect. It will show up blue when it's in that state. Let's relock. While locked to the base, if I press K and go to my batteries, we can see that we have an orange battery and two white ones. The white ones are on the grid that I'm in right now or I'm accessing the control panel through. That means they're the batteries on my ship, which say fully recharged in three hours. This battery is the one on my base, which says fully recharged in two hours with stored power of 1.85 megawatt hours. I would like the batteries on my ship to be charged before the one on the base. So I'm going to press control and I'm going to select both of those and I'm going to change the charge mode. I'm going to change it over to recharge. It is now going to steal the charge from this battery, which is now going to be fully depleted in 17 minutes, and put it into my batteries here. There is some efficiency loss in terms of the absolute amount of energy in the system, transferring power from one battery to another. However, 
All of the power that's stored in that battery on the base would have been lost if we didn't have that battery anyway, because those wind turbines had nowhere to store it. So overall, for our uses, this is giving us more energy. Be careful having done what I've just done, because, and I'm going to save before I do this because I might break some things. <laughs> if I disconnect while those batteries are on recharge, I'm going to fall on the ground and I could break something, especially my lifting thrusters, because my batteries won't give out any power on my ship. They may as well be off. I need to press K. I need to turn these batteries back on. But I'm going to make this a little bit easier. And I'm going to create a group for them. Over on the right here you can see block group. And I'm going to say minor batteries. Save. Now I have this asterisk group at the top of my blocks list. Which is both of these batteries. Now we can add that group to our hotbar. Press G. Go to the groups list over here. And we're going to put this next to our connector. With recharge on slash off. And now, instead of having to go into the menu to change the recharge status of these batteries, we can simply press 8 on our hotbar, and we can have power back, which means we can pick this back up and bring it back onto the connector. Lock it to our connector, switch it back to recharge mode, and that way, every time I jump into my ship, I need to remember, before I disconnect from the base, I switch that recharge mode onto auto. And now we can get back to adding some more thrust to this so that it can carry all of the weight of the ores that we're going to drill. First thing we're going to do is add that flat, large atmospheric thruster here underneath the cockpit. We're going to add a few more side thrusters. Three of them like this. One, two, three. Another three on this side. One, two, three. So we now have four forward thrust, six reverse thrust, five left, and five right. Get those welded up, and then we'll check the power consumption of those. While placing these sideways thrusters, do make sure that the exhausts are pointed the correct way. The grey end points away from your ship. Okay, let's test this thing out, see what our power consumption looks like after that. Make sure I remember to turn my batteries onto auto, and then disconnect with my connector lock. Now that we're unlocked, we're going to test our three directions of thrust. We're going to go up, we're going to go to the side, and we're going to go forward, which takes us to 92, or 91, 90. 89. <laughs> As we gain altitude, our thrusters use less power because they can generate less thrust. If we go in reverse, we're at 94%, but we've already gained quite a bit of altitude. If we go back down, if I now go backwards, right, and up, we're over 100%, which isn't ideal. As soon as we go to over 100% power usage, all of our thrusters create less thrust. This means that we'll have inconsistent amounts of thrust generated. I know, because I calculated it manually for this ship, that we're only just a bit over 100%. So the reduction in thrust output isn't enough for it to be too much of a problem. But it also means that we probably don't want to be adding any more thrusters to this because they're not going to increase what we can do with it. Any extra thruster we put on here is going to reduce the efficiency of all the others while also making the ship heavier which further reduces the efficiency. So this is about as many thrusters as we can get away with, which is fine, because while this is empty, we can tilt almost all the way sideways, we can tilt all the way forward, and we can tilt almost all the way backwards. So we have one more block to add to make this into a mining ship. Let's lock, turn on recharge, and we're going to add ourselves an ore detector. Press G, Find the ore detector. And I'm going to place this just behind the battery right here. I want it sticking out in line with the battery, which will make sense in a little while. It's just for aesthetics. Right click. Add the components. Get this welded up. And now we have a functional mining ship that could still use a few improvements. But let's go use it. Hop in the cockpit. Turn off recharge, disconnect from our connector, and let's go mine something. While I'm hovering, I have 44 minutes of power. While I'm flying more aggressively, substantially less, so I'm going to have to be a little bit careful about that. All right, I'm at my iron deposit, and all I can currently see is ice. That's because 
if we go into our menu and find our ore detector, it defaults to 25 meters range. We can increase this all the way up to 50. And then I still can't see anything because I'm still not close enough. Oh, no. Nope, now I can see the cobalt. <laughs> and there we go. Now we can see our iron. Ore detectors do not have an orientation that they require. They detect within a sphere around the center of their block. So you can place them any way you like. I chose to point it outwards because we're going to add some other blocks that that looks neat next to. In order to get down to our iron deposit, we're going to need to be able to use our drill. So if we press G, there are two ways we can use our drill. You can either use it by selecting a toggle on off option on the block here from the all blocks list, or, and this is my preferred way to use it, or we can select block tools and find the drill here and then add that to our hotbar. When we add this mode to our hotbar, it acts just like if we were using our hand drill. If we right click, it's going to destroy a large area around the drill, but not produce any resources. If we left click, we're going to get some resources. Unlike the hand drill, though, if you double click, this drill will not stay on. Hand tools will if you double click. So I'm going to dig down to this iron using right click to clear a nice wide path so my whole ship can fit through being very careful to keep an eye on my artificial horizon to the right of my toolbars. It is very important that we keep ourselves as close as we can manage to upright as we go, making sure we're using Q and E to correct things when we get a little bit sideways. But because of the way we designed this ship, we do have a fair bit of leeway with that, so we're less likely to tip over than if we hadn't done so. But it can still happen. Okay, we're down here at the iron, I'm now going to left click and I'm going to start at the edge of the iron deposit here so that I can demonstrate something important. We can see that our weight marker on the right hand side is going up as I drill. If I press I for my inventory now, we can see that we've got 2000 kilos of iron ore in my cockpit, 1600 in the connector, and we've got 3700 in our medium cargo container. But we've also got a whole lot of stone. like a lot of stone. We don't really want the stone anymore because we can more efficiently work with the iron ore. So we're going to head back to base and we're going to fix that. To get back out, I would recommend holding down right click as you turn around, create yourself plenty of room, making sure as we turn around that we keep ourselves level. Right now I'm quite crooked on my artificial horizon, so I'm going to level that back off and then I'm going to move forward and push up. Some of you might be wondering, why have I made this so much harder by making this a horizontal mining ship? Why are we mining something horizontally when we've got to mine down to it? Why didn't I just put the drills underneath the ship? Well, the drills aren't underneath the ship because the ore deposits aren't vertical. The ore deposits are kind of pancakes. They are very flat. And because they're very flat, I want to be able to mine forward, back, left and right, not just plunging straight down into a hole. All right, we're back with our load of iron and stone, which could have just been iron, and we're going to make it just iron for the next load. Lock down, set to recharge, hop out. What we're going to do is we're going to get the ship to throw out every bit of stone that it mines. Because stone is quite heavy and doesn't produce as much material as the ores, we want to just have the ores. So what we're going to do is we're going to head to our second hotbar. Now we're going to add this small conveyor and we're going to add our small connector. So at the back here where this connector has a conveyor port, we're going to add a block called a sorter. So we're going to scroll through our small conveyor block list until we find the sorter. Small conveyor sorter. This thing has an arrow on it on the side. That is important because that is the direction of flow that it allows things to move through it. We want to place a sorter here with the arrow pointing outward attached to that conveyor port on the side of our connector. So we'll place one there, we'll fly around the other side and we'll do the same there too. Making sure the arrow is pointing outward. So if I move around here we can see it a bit more clearly. I'm going to rotate and make it point that way. Next thing we're going to do is add a conveyor junction. So we'll keep scrolling, find the junction, add one there and another one here. And then on this side, we've only got room for one because of the ore detector. So we'll just place the one and now we're going to weld those blocks up because we're not going to be able to reach them when we put the next bits on. With those welded up, we can now place our small connectors. Make sure that the small ones 
Place one on this port here, pointing backwards. One on this port here, pointing outwards. And then on this side... We'll realise I haven't welded this up and I'll fix that. <laughs> Whoops. And now we'll place the small connectors on here. And on this side we'll get three. One, two, and three. And now, hopefully, the ore detector makes a little more sense. Because it sits neatly next to this small connector here. Get these welded up and then we can set them up to get rid of all of our stone. The reason we've added more than one of these connectors is that the more of them we have, the more quickly we can throw that stone out. I'm going to now hop in my cockpit, press K, and find my sorters. Small conveyor sorters. I have to select these one at a time and we have to make sure we set up both of them. Because unfortunately we can't set them up together. So, our small conveyor sorter number two. We're going to go filter mode and we're going to change this to whitelist. We're going to scroll down further. And then in this list we're going to find stone. Select stone and click add. That means that the sorter is going to allow stone to pass through it. Because stone is on the whitelist. And then we select the second sorter. Do the same thing. Filter mode, whitelist, scroll down. Select stone, click add, make sure it's in our active filter list. Now we can find our small connectors. For the sake of making this easier later, I'm going to rename these to ejectors. Because these are going to be throwing out stone, they're not going to be used for connections, and that's going to make my life easier later when I'm trying to figure out whether I'm looking at something that's meant to throw out stone or something that's meant to connect another ship. We can then select all of our small, now renamed ejectors, grab them, Select Collect All and Throw Out. They will now try and pull any stone from the connected inventories into the connector and then dump it out into the world. So, since there is no stone currently inside any of the inventories that it's connected to, let's go mine some. As before, make sure we turn off Recharge and then disconnect with our connector. We can just go and mine some stone. Let's just mine this boulder so that we can get a little bit of iron and a little bit of stone from nice and close by. Left click mining to make sure we collect. And there we go, we can see some stone getting ejected. If I press I, you'll see that the stone amount in our medium cargo container is now going down, same in our cockpit, and now we're out of stone. If you're feeling lazy and you don't want to have to hold down left click while you mine, you can press G and we can go to this all blocks list, select our drill, and click toggle block on off. We can then turn it on, and that acts the same as left click drilling. So we're collecting resources, and as you can see, we're throwing out this stone. So that's weight we don't have to carry while we're mining, or carry all the way back to base. And it looks like we're probably about full at this stage, so let's turn our drill off. Check our inventory, and look! It's all just iron, which is perfect. No more wasted mass from all of that stone. Let's lock ourselves down and put it back on recharge. Something important to note when we return to base with our load of ores is that if we go to our inventory screen, the ores do not automatically move to the base. We're going to have to do that manually, at least with the way things are set up here. The refinery will pull some amount of ores into it so that it can start processing them, but it will not fill itself up. So what we need to do is set up a way to quickly move all of those materials from our ship into our base. This can be done simply by finding our cargo container on our base, which is our small cargo container, and then dragging all of that ore into it from our ship. But there's a better way to do this. So let's hop out of the cockpit, walk over to this cargo container, and we're going to name this cargo container something related to our base. And for the base cargo containers, I'm going to put in CC, or cargo container. It also happens to be close to my WASD key, so it's quite easy to type in quickly when we want to search for it. If I hop back in the cockpit of my ship and press I, if I type CC, only that small cargo container appears on the right. I can then click show only inventories of the current ship, which is why I got back in the cockpit. If I click that, we see we've got the cockpit, the connector, the medium cargo container, and only the stuff on this ship. If I want to get all of my ores out in one click, or mostly one click, sometimes it requires a couple, I can use this deposit all ores, ingots and components while I've got only this cargo container on the right here. And there we go, transferred across, all nice and empty. That means I can go out and collect another load of ores. 
in my really boring white ship. There are two more things we're going to do today. I'm going to show you how you can make this ship a little more interesting. And then I'm going to show you how you can make this ship even better as a mining ship. First off, let's make it look more interesting. I'm going to utilize the colors from our drop pod here, the blue, the white, and the gray. To change the color of a block I'm about to place down, I can press P and use the color picker here. In this case, this gray on the right of our default grays is the same gray as the bottom of this ship. But if I didn't have that on my list, make sure I've got a block in hand, make sure it's snapping over the block that I'm looking at. You can tell that I'm looking at the correct block with the red bounding box around that block. Press Shift P and it will pick up that color. To then use that to paint our ship, we can use middle mouse. And I'm going to paint all these thrusters to this dark gray, all these ones on the bottom. It's going to add a degree of depth by having this extra color down here. Middle mouse on all of those. Then I'm also going to paint this stuff at the back here. These three thrusters here and the ore detector and the connector ejector system. There we go. That's a step in the right direction, but I think we still need some more color and I need more fuel. So next up, let's add some blue. I'm going to paint my battery blue and I'm going to add a couple of extra armor blocks in around here near my gyroscope. I'm going to paint this one blue. I'm going to put that there. Weld it up. Then I'm going to put a little slope in here. Weld that up. And a little slope in here. And weld it up. And do the same on the other side. Just to add a little splash of color. Then on the back side of the battery, I'm going to add a little bit of stuff under here, under these ejectors. With one, two, and three and match that on the other side. I'm trying to limit how many of these blocks I put down because every block of detailing you add like this is more mass that you have to fly with when you're talking about a mining ship. If we get a little carried away, that can actually significantly impact how effective that mining ship is. But in this case, this is also providing more connections between all of these blocks. So if you bump something, the whole ship is less likely to just crumble apart, <laughs> which is... Probably an advantage. Now you might have noticed when I went and mined, it was pretty dark. So let's add some lighting to this too. Go to our third hotbar and find our lights. The block group we want to add is this spotlight group with the plus. So we're going to add that to our hotbar. And I'm going to put spotlight on either side of this thruster here. To do that, I need a way to attach it. And I want to make this in the white blocks. So I'm going to select the white color of this thruster with shift P. Place that block there and then place a spotlight on front like so. We'll do the same on the other side. And then we've got spotlights pointing forward. I'd also like to be able to see what's to the side of me. So I'm going to add these interior lights, one on each of the batteries. We'll get those welded up. Oh, and also by building that interior light, you happen to unlock some new blocks. So that's not bad either. With the lights built, we now want to set them up. Up back in our cockpit find our lights. Spotlights, they're pretty much fine to leave at default. The interior lights though, at default, only put their light out to 3.6 meters. We want to be able to see behind us a lot further than that, so let's push them out to 10 on both of them. If you're finding that that's making everything just a little overly bright, we can select both of our lights and drop the intensity down to say 1.5. And if you want to enter a specific value on any of these sliders, control click on it then you get this little pop-up and you can type in the value there and now let's go see how it looks mining with this much light turn off recharge disconnect let's fly oh i just noticed i didn't paint one of my batteries i'm gonna fix that <laughs> now that i'm back in this mining tunnel you can see how much better it is with all this extra light around we can see all the rock we can see all the ore it is much much safer with all this light. So that's why you want to make sure you add some lights to your mining ships. Let's grab some iron while we're here. And then we're going to head back and do the last little upgrade on our mining ship that isn't required, but you might like to have anyway. If you're struggling to keep your ship aligned to gravity, don't feel bad if you have to do a quick reload because you crashed your ship. Personally, I think that's the best way for you to learn because if you have the opportunity to do the same thing multiple times in quick succession, you're going to learn more than if you have to go and rebuild a ship and each time you get to check to see if you've learned something is spread apart by several hours of rebuilding and frustration. 
you're just not going to learn it as quickly. So I think, especially when you're starting out, just give yourself a break, give yourself a chance, and reload and use that backup save. Don't feel bad. It's not saves coming in Space Engineers, it's just having a better day. Alright, we're going to lock down, switch to recharge, press I, type CC, switch to our connected inventories on ship, make sure we've got show only inventories of the current ship selected, and click our deposit all ores to move all that iron on board. And our ship is nice and empty, we're good. The last little upgrade I wanted to teach you about for this ship was the option of adding a drill either side of our central drill here. The reason I haven't done that by default is that this ship, with its current amount of inventory and its current amount of thrusters, was fairly tightly balanced. What I mean by that is, you can fill up the whole thing with ore, and it will still be able to fly. If you add two more drills, you're going to be able to drill quicker, but you're also potentially going to be able to drill enough that you won't be able to fly with the amount of batteries and thrusters this has. So you're going to have to keep an eye on your ship's mass. But, because we can probably do that, I think it's worth talking about adding two extra drills. We can pop one here, and one here. These thrusters have been positioned carefully so they do not damage these drills. Weld these up, and we now have three drills. Just for some style points, I'm going to get rid of this slope here. Add in a cube, and then a slope, like so. Just because I think it'll look a bit nicer. And there we go. Here's the ship with three drills. So let's try this out. We will turn off recharge, disconnect from our dock. And let's go over and, again, just drill our little test rock here. Something to note is that because we've added two extra drills, our little turn on off command is still only going to work on the central drill. If we want it to work for all of them, first off, press K, find our drills, select them all, and create a block group called minor drills, or whatever you want to call it. Then press G, we'll remove this from the hotbar, remove from toolbar, go to groups, find our minor drills, and then select toggle block on and off. And now all three will turn on and off. Or you can continue to just use the block tools command where we use left click and right click to mine. So let's drill this out. If you notice on the right, our mass is slowly increasing. At some point, I'm going to get too heavy and I'm going to sink to the ground and potentially break my ship. 57 now, 62. 66 is too much. So for safety, we probably want to stick to under 60 tons so that we can always make sure that we can still fly with those three lifting thrusters that we have. If we were to try to add more lifting thrusters, we're going to end up having too little battery power for being able to maneuver while lifting, which is risky. So we'd then add more batteries, which adds more weight, which means more thrusters and so on and so forth. Over time, you'll figure out ways that you like it to be and ways that you'll like to fly. I tried to balance this miner as best I could for new players to optimize flight, but also optimize usability. So just keep in mind, if you add those drills, don't let it get too heavy. There we have it. We have a mining ship. Redock it. And let's talk about a couple of advanced techniques that we could have used instead of using the landing gear in order to build our mining ship. I've added two connectors to the base just temporarily so that we can demonstrate these points. If we were to build a new ship and we have a connector pointing upwards and we were happy to have the connector pointing downwards on our ship, what we can do is build that connector on the base first, make sure we switch to our small grid connector, and then rotate this so that it's sitting horizontally. Then make sure that it's just over the top of the other connector, and then drop it on top like that. We can then weld this up, and then once it's welded, we can lock this to the connector below it. Go to our control panel and select lock. Now that it's locked to the base, any batteries we build on our ship, as we build them, we can turn to recharge so that they can be charging up as we do all of our decorative bits and add all our thrusters to our ship, so that by the time our ship's finished, we've already got charged batteries. This is quite easy to pull off for vertically mounted ones, but for horizontal ones it's a bit more tricky because the small grid connector won't line up with the large grid one if we place it directly on the ground. So what we're going to do first is place a couple of light armor blocks. Drop our blocks down, place two like that, then we place our connector on top of that. Rotate it so that it lines up, build our connector, and just like before, select it, lock it down, and then you can build while attached to power on your base which is really quite handy for getting those early batteries charged up without having to wait around for it after you've finished your build. 
If you've got any tips on anything that you know that I haven't mentioned here, feel free to share them in the comments. Equally, if you've got any questions about anything I've said here today, let me know and I'll do my best to answer them. Next time, we'll be using our mining ship to collect enough resources so that we can build a large refinery, a proper assembler, and go through all of the production upgrades that we can utilize with that, as well as probably building a little bit of style onto our base. So there's all that and plenty more to come, and I will see you then.